And then my third and last question is this. Could it be that our hearts need to be enlarged in order to experience that? We're going to put God in our hearts. We're going to be filled with the fullness of God. We, our hearts got to be enlarged. I mean, you can't, if you're going to walk in it, you can't have a small, narrow, hard, tiny, selfish heart and be filled with the fullness of God at the same time. I think that makes sense, doesn't it? Now, it's interesting that even in our popular culture, the, the mimics, they mimic the Word of God, right? Because in the children's story, the Grinch that stole Christmas, the Grinch's heart was two sizes too small. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever remembered that or heard that little story. And then when he comes to his mind and he thinks about all the good that Christmas brought and everything, his heart grew three sizes. I mean, you know, they stole that right out of the Bible. That's something that God does. God is the one that expands people's hearts. God's the one that gives people a big heart. I want to read a scripture for you and ask you some questions and then we're going to pray. This is a powerful scripture. First, Second Corinthians 6. I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. It says this, O Corinthians. How many of you know when the Bible starts speaking to you like, oh, you know you better listen, right? Oh, Corinthians. Paul says, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You see, Paul's heart was big. Paul's heart was enlarged. He loved these people. But notice what it says. It says, you are not restricted underline that word restricted by us but you are restricted by your own affections now in return for the same I speak as to children you also be open let me read it in the King James Version for you it says O ye Corinthians our mouth is open unto you our heart is enlarged you are not straightened underline that word straightened straightened in us but you are straightened in your own bowels or on the inside now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. So what I'm saying is that that word restricted in the New King James Version or straightened in the King James Version literally means narrow or hemmed in. In other words, they weren't receiving Paul because their heart was too small. That's the bottom line. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't like things that are narrow. I'm never moving into a tiny house. Just saying. I don't care if it becomes a popular thing for people to do. You go ahead. Get yourself a little tiny house. Move into it. Enjoy. I'm not living there, okay? Because I like things that are a little wider. I don't want to get me one of those little tiny cars either. A narrow car. How many of you are with me? I like wide. Have you ever met anybody from another culture and they used to live in a 250 square foot little apartment from in Buenos Aires or Japan or somewhere like that and, 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 and they get to talk to you and they get right here. Have you ever had that happen to you? I mean, they're right there. I want to say, man, come on, we're in Texas, guy. Back up a little bit. It's okay. There's room here. There's space here. Okay, I know, I, I know I'm, being, I'm being a little bit silly today, but I mean, that's talking about things in the natural world. But let me tell you, sometimes people live with a little, small, narrow, little, tiny heart. And what happens to you when your heart and your life is like that? Life becomes all about you, man. It's not about anybody else, and your prayers kind of sound like this. God bless me and my wife, my son John and his wife, us four, no more, Amen. The focus of their thoughts and the focus of their attentions and all of their affections are on themselves. It's me, 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 me. All they think about is their life, their comfort. They spend money only on themselves. Let me tell you, how you know God doesn't want us to live that way. God wants us to have a big heart. God, are we going to have the fullness of God or what? If we're going to have the fullness of God, we've got to say, God, expand my heart. Take my heart and stretch it out. Uh, whatever's in there, that's, that you know, push it, push it, push it, push it. Let me read it to you from the message paraphrase. It says this, dear, dear Corinthians, and I love this. 
This is a great, I should memorize this. Dear, dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter into this wide open spacious life. Oh, come on, I'm telling you, God has a wide open spacious life. It's a great life. Come on, is there anybody believes that living for God is the greatest life that there is? It's a wide open spacious life. And he says, we don't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can and with great affection. And then he says, open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. Oh, come on, somebody. I just think that God wants to stretch our hearts. These are my meditative thoughts this week, all right? This is what I've been thinking about. God, I want my heart to be bigger than it's ever been in 2019. I, you know, and, and, and uh, I don't want to live in a small way. And so I came up with some questions. I'm just going to read these, and then we're going to go to the Lord in prayer today. Let me read them for you. These are questions that measure the bigness of your heart. You see, I can't claim to have the fullness of God if, if I can't really get down to what does that look like in a practical sense. How many of you know the Word of God's practical? Amen? It says this, who are you? Okay, uh, let me just give you some questions today. Who are you intentionally keeping on the outside of your heart? I'm talking about the fullness of God. When's the last time you prayed for someone else? When's the last time you sacrificed something in order to enrich someone else's life? Is your concern mostly for your comfort or the comfort of others? If you're married, are you generous with your love? Are you willing to do the little things to keep your home flowing correctly, such as doing dishes, cleaning the floor, and doing the wash? I'm talking about a big heart here today. I'm talking about having the fullness. The fullness of God will make you do that. Some of y'all looking at me like, what are you talking about? Are you aware of the people that you work with and what they face? Do you have to always have the credit for accomplishments? Or is it okay to give the credit to someone else? Are you concerned with the kingdom of God and its expansion? Do you truly care that the church you attend is blessed by God? What are you doing to make that happen? Where do you serve? Do you have a ministry some way touching others for Christ? Or who are you discipling? What, what about people who walk in the front door for the first time? Are you engaging them? When is the last time you took a brother or sister out to eat for fellowship especially your pastor, after this two weeks of fasting. Amen. The devil made me do it. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you willing to do things behind the scenes, getting no credit for on, on this earth, but that God might be glorified? Amen. Are you a giver? Or hey, let me tell you, that's not I mean, how you know that's not about wealth, okay? That's about the spirit. That's about the bigness of heart. I, I've met some people who didn't have hardly anything, and they're huge givers, right? They'll give you the shirt off their back. Amen. And so on and so forth. I just don't want to live my life. In a small way, I want to have all the fullness of God inside of me. Would you stand?